Welcome. In this video, we will be learning about chemical bonding and the basics of chemical bonding and how these things form and what kind of criteria we're looking to meet when we make a bond. A chemical bond is just a force that holds groups of two or more atoms together and makes them function as a unit. So we're used to seeing these types of things all the time. So we have water, H2O, and those three atoms in that molecule are held together by bonds, right? We can also have bonds between sodium and chloride to make salt. And this is just two atoms or more coming together to form a compound or a molecule. And atoms of elements naturally bond together and they do this in search of a more stable electron configuration. So atoms on their own might not be very stable, but when they get together with other atoms, they can become much more stable. And in chemistry, if we're breaking old bonds and forming new bonds, this accounts for most of our chemical reactions. We're making and breaking bonds. That's where the exciting stuff happens. We can also think of a bond as a simultaneous attraction of two nuclei for the same electrons. So if we have an atom of hydrogen, it has a nucleus, an atom of oxygen, it has a nucleus, and they have electrons. And those nuclei are going to sort of compete or share over those electrons that are in between them. And they do this based on their individual electronegativity. So we talked a lot about this in the periodic table unit. And the electronegativity measures the attraction of a nucleus for electrons involved in chemical bonding. So how much the nucleus of an atom attracts or does not attract electrons in the neighboring atom is going to be dependent on electronegativity. So metals, remember, tend to have low electronegativity. And that example of that would be lithium with a value of 1. Nonmetals tend to have higher electronegativities, and an example here is bromine, which is 3. And those electronegativity values are going to be really important when it comes to how and where the electrons go in a bond in between two. In general, when we form a chemical bond, energy is released. This is the driving force of the reaction. This one is what makes it happen. So the more energy released, the stronger the bond. And to break a bond, we're going the opposite direction. Energy must be absorbed. So it takes energy to break a chemical bond. That can be in the form of heat or physical energy, but we have to put energy in to get a bond to break. And we release energy when we form a bond. So we can think of that on a scale and a graph. So over here on our y-axis we have energy and we're showing the formation of a chemical bond along the x-axis. So if we have two isolated hydrogen atoms, these two atoms have fairly high energy, but when they come together to form a hydrogen molecule, or H2, they have much lower energy. So here we have a release of energy upon binding of those two atoms together. So atoms will bond together to achieve a lower potential energy and increase their stability. So that stability is a driving factor in how our chemical bonds form. One of the ways that atoms achieve stability is by following something called the octet rule. And the octet rule states that to achieve a state of low potential energy, atoms seek to obtain eight valence electrons. This is the octet rule. So all of our atoms have a certain number of valence electrons, and they can gain or lose electrons to have eight total valence electrons. So atoms gain, lose, or share electrons to achieve our eight valence electrons elect octet rule. And 
what happens here is that the atoms of a particular element want to have the same number of electrons as the noble gas closest to them on the periodic table. So our periodic table shows us that noble gases in a, have full outer shells that have eight valence electrons. And this is a very stable arrangement. So noble gases get their name because they don't really react with anything, because they don't have to, because they already have satisfied the octet rule. So they're not interested in gaining or losing electrons. They already have eight valence electrons in their shells. Also, they have high ionization energies. It's difficult to pull electrons away from noble gases because they are very stable. So to pull an electron away takes a lot of energy. They also don't really have an electronegativity value. Electronegativity values are based on atoms that are in bonds and sharing electrons with other atoms, and noble gases don't really do that. And it makes them very inert, right? lack of reactivity. So if we take a look at a couple of examples, if we look at the electron configuration for calcium, it's 2882. And calcium tends to make ions that are plus two ions, which means they lose two electrons from their valence shell. And their ionic electron configuration is 288. And that's exactly the same as argon, which has an electron configuration of 288. So by losing two electrons, calcium has gained a noble gas electron configuration. It has eight valence electrons satisfying the octet rule, which makes it much more stable. Oxygen is another example. Its atom electron configuration is 2-6. Oxygen tends to gain electrons, and it gains two to give us an overall minus two charge. And when it does that, it puts them into our valence shell and ends up giving us a total of eight electrons. And this configuration is the exact same as neon, which is closest to oxygen in the periodic table. So by gaining two electrons, oxygen has become stable because it's following this octet rule. Okay, so that's it for this lesson on our introduction to chemical bonding. And remember, chemical bonds are just forces in between two or more atoms that hold them together to form molecules or compounds. Atoms like to obtain eight valence electrons in accordance with the octet rule, and they can do that by either gaining, losing, or sharing electrons with other atoms to give us nice, stable compounds. Good work today. See you next time.